package. This is me here, David. And, um, you know, if you had told me that when I was a child that I'll be doing something like this in the future, I would tell you, dude, this is awesome. But yeah, I've, I have literally always my whole life been tampering with any kind of thing that I own, including this. Well, this is not technically things I own. It's just that new parts that I am now building to make it work. So in this video, I'm going to show you the in-depth views of what was wrong with this engine from the start. Why, when I first built it, that it didn't work out. And now, how to build it properly. Stay tuned. First thing on the list is the gears. That right here. First thing on the list. I can hang this. I'm gonna do that. Doesn't get any more in depth than that. Let's let's recap here. Let's recap. The main shaft is the one with with the clutch this on it. So it's not this one. This is this one. That's the main shaft. Why? Because it's got that spin right here. The counter shaft is the one with the outside gearing for the chain. Now, it's already assembled. You might have looked how this is assembled through the book right here. First thing is you have to check the gap between the first case to see if it fits properly and not grinding over there. That's the first thing. When I removed the engine from the first time, there was a big grinding gear right here. And even so, afterward, when I rebuilt it, I was using the left case. These two are brand new cases. So, the way this works is that it sits on the bearing right here, and then a line on the opposite. All right? So, what you want, you want to make sure that you have this one right here. Same as you see another one here. You can't see it well, but there is one here. So. You do this like that. Don't force it. And spin it. There should be no grinding against the case whatsoever. If there is grinding, that means the case is broken. That's why you have to order new cases. Often happen when, when these things breaks inside. And um this one, with that one right here, alright, this is on the opposite now, because it's facing the bearing down there, and this is going to be the one that's inside the engine, so what you're going to do, you're going to turn this, you know, until it fits. It doesn't fit you can lift something up that's it so it's not gonna align properly but it doesn't have the gears on it but it can turn you want it to turn left and right all right this washer is on top the opposite washer is over there First thing you want to do, because I'm in a good mood, I'm going to throw in one more to the, just to the mix, and that's this guy right here. Maybe this belongs to that one. That was too big. To that one. That was too big. All right. In a jolly good mood. This one is your starter. On the uh, EG250, 
it's actually from from the outside well in this and then it's from from the middle case so with all said and done all right you're fitting the case I already know this is gonna connect never Cookie crumble. So, a goal here. We got a simple goal. And that's to close this thing. I would normally use screws to close this, but because of this thing moving back and forth. I don't want my screw to not be enough to hold the whole case. And um, this is a little bit stronger than a screw. So, you have to understand the process of things. See this? I have to make sure you get the right gap here. I have to make sure you get the right gap here. So that's confirmed. You have to make sure that the case closes smooth. Right? There's no gap on the case. And you have to make sure everything's aligned properly. That's what I didn't do last time. This is the crankshaft. Not a camshaft, crankshaft.
Now, the crankshaft has a right place to be. You have to follow the pattern. See these? That's a thread mark. And that's supposed to be where it's connected all around. But it's got a specific pattern, meaning that I'm gonna have to remove those gears to make it fit. After doing this a second time, the easier explanation beside following the right marks on the CRF 230 is that you see these has got like a, a curved pattern. So each of them, when they're supposed to fit on the right groove, it's gonna be like this. Are you watching this? That's a curve pattern. It's not necessarily up and down, or it could be the last one is up and the, 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 the first two are down. But once you find a pattern, you get to see how it is. So this one says each, each, is, each shift for, has an, an identification mark, left, L for left, C for center, R for right, slaw, slock, and slar. Install the left shift fork into the shifted gears groove. The left shift fork into the shifted gear groove with the mark facing up right side crankcase. So right side crankcase right here, the mark facing up, that is, that is the R, that's not the left. can see it as the R and then and that's the first one so on that case they would tell you to install this one like install it here it's it's backwards so you have to start from the bottom second and third right so you just have to follow the marks the the, the, the pattern of the marks like this so two of them for for here one two and then one for this one. All right, I successfully installed the whole engine. Congratulations me, but this is a test run. This is not actually the installation because I have to put the screw in. I have to put the chain here and then I have to put the other uh, chain tensioner on that, that crankshaft, which doesn't have it. So that's a test run. The test here is to see when I close this, if I can spring the, spin the spring with my hand after the case is closed. There it is, it's fully closed. It spins grinding noise and this closes still I'm trying to figure out where I took that thing from where could that be man it's a mystery even to me 